for anyone listening to my voice. I welcome you and I trust that our little uh, meditations on some of the Psalms will be a blessing to us and that's what I propose to do is to look at some of the Psalms together and I'm going to read the first Psalm. There are just six verses in it. The first three verses are to do with the blessings of the godly man and the uh, second three verses, the four to five, are to do with the end and the judgment of the ungodly. So I'm going to read it to you. It's only six verses. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We are being presented with two ways in human life. There are two destinies and two groups of people on earth. Those who are believers, described in this as the, uh, the, the blessed man, and those who are not believers, described in the second part as the ungodly. Well, it begins, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So the very first word in the book of Psalms, of 150 Psalms, is the word blessed. God loves to bless. He wants to bless you, even in a time of anxiety, a time of uncertainty, a time of illness or unemployment, a time of fear, he wants to bless you in it. And there's a blessing which will last and endure to eternity. But he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So there's a very obvious lesson here. Let us be careful about our company. Who are we walking with? And when you're walking with someone, you are always walking to a destination, you're walking somewhere, to go somewhere, to arrive somewhere. And if you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly, where will you arrive? So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. When you're standing with people, you're being influenced by them, you're hearing them, you're saying, these are my friends, I'm standing with them. Be very careful who we're standing with. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So, blessed is the man, he neither walks nor stands nor sits with these people. And it's a difficult, it's a sad thing when a Christian is sitting with the scornful. Because when you're sitting with people, you're saying, I belong here. These are my friends. And to make your friends with the scornful would be a sad thing. When one witnesses to a person, the most grieving reaction that you can get is one of scorn. The kind of person who mocks what you're saying or who rubbishes the gospel and sacred things that you've been talking about and they rubbish them. That is sad. Do not make that your company. You may have to work with people like that and your testimony should shine before them. But do not make them your company. 
you, they don't have to be your social friends. Well, those are the negative things that the godly man won't uh, uh, companion with. But his delight, here's the positive, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. There's something about the Bible which delights our hearts and when we read it we know, ah, this is how it should be. We're listening to the voice of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Mind you, you'll not sit long in the seat of the scornful or with people who mock the word of God if you're doing this, that your delight is in God's word. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. What an occupation for the mind. To engage your thoughts with God and with the Lord Jesus Christ to learn more about the Saviour and more and more about Jesus. And it's all here and God opens it up to you and the, the Word of God becomes your delight. And you can think of it in the morning and you can think of it at night, day and night. What kind of effect will that have? Will it make any difference to me if I if I do this and make the word of God my delight? Well, it certainly will, because we're introduced to the thought, the concept of bearing fruit. Our very character is being shaped into the likeness of Christ. So it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The refreshing waters of the word of God that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. There will come a time when we are bearing fruit and love and joy and peace and so on will be engaging our hearts. His leaf shall not wither, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And the things that you do as a believer for the Lord will endure to eternity. Now that is a concept that the ungodly man, the unsaved, doesn't have. The atheist knows nothing about that. The, as far as the atheist is concerned, what he does here and now, it'll give him some pleasure perhaps, but that's it. It has no ultimate eternal meaning. For the psalmist says the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. In other words, your life which was lived for yourself and for sin in the end is totally empty and valueless. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Make sure if there's someone listening to my voice and you're not a believer, you make sure that you're not going to die as one of the ungodly. Having said no to Christ, there's time still, if you're listening to this uh, little recording, that you can put your faith in Christ and leave the ungodly. For Christ died for the ungodly that they might be saved. Then it says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Here are the two divisions in verse 6. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. For you, as a Christian, he knows all the circumstances of your life, he knows that self-sacrificing thing you've done in love for a neighbour, in love for a family member, in love for an unsaved person to get the gospel to them. He knows the way of the righteous. He knows and follows and is interested in everything you do and think. He's interested in your growth as a Christian. He's interested in the way you live your life. He's intently intensely interested but the way of the ungodly shall perish 
So don't look over your shoulder and be a little envious of the ungodly who can do all kinds of things and sin at pleasure and it looks like they're free and they're enjoying themselves. They're not free. They're really slaves. They're slaves to sin and they're under judgment and under condemnation. And really, at the end, it says the ungodly shall perish. But let's encourage ourselves as Christians, as believers, that every day, even in, during a pandemic, during days of anxiety, every day is meaningful and precious to God. He knows all your circumstances, your fears, make them known to him, make your requests known to him. But the one who died on the cross to save you is not going to forsake you. He's not going to fail you. It says, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He knows. And he knows about you. So take courage. And as we live day by day, remember that every day matters. And as a Christian, walking in the will of God, every day counts for eternity. So the Christian has a life view and a purpose in life that the ungodly knows nothing about. Let us be encouraged in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our little meditation on Psalm 1. Uh, our next meditation will be on the second psalm, a prophetic psalm, a giant of a psalm. Thank you for listening.